Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you're having a great day. Let's take another look here at Polkadot, up 30% on the day. I mean, look at this here. I actually have to zoom out <laughs> to be able to see the whole thing. So awesome stuff, absolutely great. Uh, what we wanna look at, of course, um, is key levels. We're gonna just kind of zoom out a little bit and look at recent candlestick closures, uh, highs and lows, and it's kind of understand what that looks like because when, when you try to chase FIB levels, it can be kind of challenging and difficult. So um, it's best not to rely on FIB levels when things like this happen. So to those Elliott Wave enthusiasts, I'm sorry, those just aren't really the greatest uh, ways to identify, um, you know, either A, reversals or, uh, you know, more macro stuff. And again, don't get me wrong, I use FIB levels all the time. I love them. They are definitely very beneficial. But if this is all you're using to trade, you got another thing coming. You've probably got some luck here recently, though. I can tell you there's uh, some pretty good coins pumping right now and congrats again to that. Love to see that, it's really, really cool. Um, and what I wanna do is talk a little bit about uh, liquidation. Really, before we do that though, I wanna say, hey, kudos and congrats to our community members here. We took some nice profits on Cartesi, 63%, uh, Tau, 34%, or sorry, 32 rather. And then of course, 42% here for AVAX. Those are all trades we took within the last thing, you know, one to three, one to three, one to four days. Okay, so cool stuff. Well, you can't catch them all, folks. You got to celebrate the small stuff and make sure that you, um, you know, take some trades. Try not to sit on the sidelines too much. I know I recommend that a lot, um, but also make sure that you know you're working within your risk tolerance too. So just taking way too many trades at one point is generally not favorable. Um, and again, just be very careful. Just pumping money into the market right now because Bitcoin is at somewhat of a uh, you know a reversal point and it may pull back. I'm not proposing we're gonna see a significant correction, but we might see 95K range. And if that happens, a lot of volts, you know, majority of this profit that just occurred could actually be re removed, if you will, all right? So just know that. It was this liquidation in the last 12 hours, we can see it's kind of sparse, but there is a little bit more to the downside. This is right here around that support at 370, sorry, 837. 840 roughly is that lower level of support based on the local low, okay, where the price pulled back to. We also got some liquidation above the price, nothing really to worry about, but it's really hard to identify any kind of liquidation events. Um, the key takeaway here, I think, is to look at the delta, and we can see a certain taper off, which is good. So we don't have too many lungs in the market right now. They either got liquidated, which is why the price pulled back down, that's more likely the culprit, or they secured profits on the long. Knowing most crypto holders, uh, they probably didn't secure profits. They're probably still holding. And those who essentially got closed out uh, were probably just some high leverage longs here at the uh, you know eight, 8 to 8.30 range that just got liquidated. Anyways, that's pretty much par for the course. Let's take a look at the daily time frame though. We'll quickly identify a few things. And what I like to look for initially is just some key levels. So we're just gonna draw some lines on the chart and kind of pay attention to it and uh, see if they may be worth, you know, worthwhile to, to, to confirm. Okay, so again, generally speaking, I'm just looking for consistency in highs and obviously some lows too, possibly, just to identify. So there's just some areas to kind of consider. Once more, folks, when you look at the lines in the chart, that's pretty much all they are. But in a lot of ways, they, they do provide some kind of zones and some ranges to help us understand where we're at. And that's what FIB levels do too, right? So if you can kind of combine the two together, uh, plus overextension and a few other factors we're going to look at here shortly, you can kind of see some con confirming factors or confluence here. We can see so far this 0.6 and 8, this golden pocket's working as a potential resistance level. We can also see here 0.5 FIB level, that was a consistency where the price had difficulty breaking above a few times, right? So again, just some areas I like to draw on the charts to pay attention to. It's not a guarantee, but it gives us some ranges to work within and helps us understand uh, roughly where the price might go next. Okay, and again, the highest point here, uh, the local high of but roughly, I'm just gonna say $12. That's an area uh, that will probably have a significant retracement initially if we get there soon. Uh, okay, anyways, just that's all speculation at this point. Let's talk a little bit about overextension first and just kind of quickly go from here. So we're not like massively overextended by any stretch. We had a nice period of consolidation before the price broke out. Okay, so that's good. It implies we could continue to run. Smaller time frames might tell us a different story, but from a daily perspective, Everything seems to be pretty good here. While we are overextended, this is just a cause for leaving your long position open. You never want to uh, close your trade based on you know an overextension. You want to look at the RSI, and when the RSI comes back down under 70, that's when you consider closing out your trade. Because the probability of the price running from here is greater because it broke a key level resistance. That is the reason why RSI at 70 is such a powerful thing. Uh, it can work really well in your favor. So wait it out. I would say there's a distinct probability we see further upside. A lot of it hinges again on Bitcoin, if Bitcoin can maintain its range. 
uh, then I think we're going to see that. If Bitcoin pulls back, we'll probably see a bigger correction too. Okay. Again, quite possibly the 745 level. That would seem like a sensible uh, spot considering we had a you know local highs as well as that, that halfway mark on the FIB correction. Okay. Either way, everything else is looking good. We got a stochastic swing, MACD convergence. Like everything's going to look fully bullish on the daily time frame. That's the same thing with most coins right now. Even Bitcoin, even though it's showing some small, uh, you know, shifts in momentum, so to speak, it's definitely looking pretty good. Um, keep in mind, though, and this is just a quick little heads up. I send this out in my trade alerts to my community. Bitcoin is printing a rising wedge pattern and double top. So I do think that uh, you know, there's a distinct chance we do see a little bit further downside for Bitcoin. Again, I don't think it's going to be massive corrections from altcoins, but we just got to recognize that, you know, when, when Bitcoin does pull back, altcoins are kind of having that knee-jerk reaction. Like this is a good example here. Dogecoin pulled back quite significantly. I'm going to cover that soon, but we saw about a 12% correction from top to bottom in, in eight hours. Just from a, what was it? This is a, maybe a 1% correction from Bitcoin. So that's a, that's a pretty significant move. Anyways, not proposing uh, Polkadot's going to do that. I'm just letting you know that that is present in the market right now. We're over 70 on the RSI. Big surprise. We already know that. But until the RSI comes back down, you leave your long position open. That's generally the best practice. I've found the most profit in, you know, waiting for that to pull back. While the price could still come down lower by the time you secure profits, you are probably in such a good sh such good shape with your current long. It's best to wait because you might get a lot more out of it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Stochastic is swinging back down, but money flow index is super high. Follow the volume, folks. So we stay above this, uh, this average here. We're going to be in good shape. The key takeaway is that once the average start, the, the volume starts to dry up, then the price will dry up with it, okay? But we have a tremendous amount of volume, oddly enough, on a weekend here, and is looking very good. Having said all that, the hourly time frame is gonna let us know that we are still in good shape with everything. There is zero reasons to consider shorting this coin. Uh, same thing here as well. We look at TD Sequential, we're massively overextended. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 candles of overextension. Basically, uh, you know, the price should have pulled back by now, but it didn't, right? So that 25% continuation um, really means very little here because I think there's more potential for further upside at this point. Again, pending Bitcoin doesn't make a monumental move to the downside. I think DOT's going to revisit its local high here about 940 and probably go higher. I think 960 is probably a likely next target. The reason why I feel that way is because if you look at the volume, it's steadily increasing. You see how hard this one pulled back, but how quickly we're, we're responding to Bitcoin still pulling back. Um, there's a lot of strength there in this coin. So again, just some things to be mindful of. I'll post a playout chart here shortly on our Twitter, Telegram, and Discord. It will look something like this if you're not familiar. Just kind of gives you an identification of you know coins that I cover, what I think is going to happen next, and I kind of highlight some important factors there for you. So that is there available for you. Last but not least, too, folks, make sure you check out BitUnix if you haven't already. Link down below. You're eligible for my $60,000 prize pool this month here. There's six days left to qualify. Top 20 traders get, uh, you know, spread that spread that that's, uh, 60K prize pool amongst themselves. So pretty awesome stuff. And again, if you use my link to register, there's always going to be some kind of new competition or benefit every month. So cool stuff. You're automatically eligible for my community if you want to use that link. Otherwise, uh, no KYC or VPN, folks. They're just an awesome exchange. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll look forward to seeing the next one. Thanks so much again for your time. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.